Earlier this year, I reviewed the Razer Blade with 1060 graphics and the new Intel 7th generation processor. At the time, though, that was only the Full HD version, and Razer promised a 4K variant later on. Well, it's finally here, and better late than never. Today, we're going to take a quick look at the 4K Razer Blade. For basic specifications, not much has changed. You're still getting 16 gigs of DDR4 RAM. You have an NVIDIA GTX 1060 with six gigabytes of graphics. And that's a really good graphics card. It's just enough to do VR as well as play some first person shooters at a very high frame rate, usually 60 or higher using higher ultra graphics. You also get options for 512 gigabytes or one terabyte of NVMe SSD for storage. Uh, they are using the Samsung PM961 for most of these devices, so you get excellent read and write speeds. Otherwise, for port, you're getting a Thunderbolt 3 with USB-C. Of course, that does support the Razer Core, so if you want to put in a 1080 Ti for the Razer Core, which is a bit expensive, but it totally works, you can do that as well. Plus, you get three USB 3.0 ports, an HDMI 2.0, and your headphone and microphone combo. For the processor, there's the Intel Core i7-7700HQ, so it is a full quad-core processor. That differs from the Razer Blade Stealth, which we recently reviewed, and that's just an Ultrabook with a dual-core processor. So this one's going to give you a lot better performance. It also makes it really ideal for graphics professionals who want a beefy laptop that doesn't weigh a lot. Speaking of weight, you're talking about 4.3 pounds or just under 2 kilograms. That is slightly heavier than a Full HD model. And that's all due to that touchscreen. Okay, let's talk about this display. It is a full 14-inch 4K display. That's 3840 by 2160. And it's a sharp IGZO display, which is one of my favorite. You get very good viewing angles as well as excellent color reproduction. Speaking of, I did a color calibration. You are talking 99% sRGB and 79% Adobe RGB. And that is actually very good. That means it is slightly higher than the Surface Pro series and being a touchscreen, that is very impressive. It also goes to about 350 nits of brightness, which is not super bright, but it's enough to get the job done. Overall, it's a really good display, but as you can see, Razer still has their really thick bezels. I don't actually know if they can put in a 15.6 inch display and that may be a limiting factor here. They may have to redesign the entire laptop in order to accommodate a better display that has less bezel. We'll have to see. There's no rumors about such a device and we may not see that until 2018. And that makes buying this device a little bit of a challenge if you don't love those bezels, but I can at least vouch for the display. It's touch and it works very well. And it's one of the best I have used. All right, let's talk a little bit about the pros and cons. I really like the Razer Blade build quality. It's CNC machined aluminum, unibody design, very solid laptop. It also picks up fingerprints, which drives me a bit nuts. I would have liked to see that new gray version with the Blade Stealth here with the Blade. Unfortunately, we have to wait for another revision if that's going to happen at all. Now, the device is very good, but let's talk about who this is for. Now, if you're going to be gaming on this, you probably won't be gaming in 4K. After all, the 1060, while powerful, is not powerful enough to drive a 4K display and hit 60 frames per second for most first-person shooters. Now, if you want to use the Razer Core with the 1080 Ti, be my guest, you probably can do that. It's going to cost you a lot of money, though. It is an option. That means this display is mostly for when you're not gaming. It's going to be for video editing, photo editing, or if you just like a really good Windows 10 experience, and for there, it works very well. It's also for those who don't want a matte display like the Full HD version. Now, I like matte for gaming. A lot of people don't. They want better color contrast, and you'll get that here. This is a very good display. Just keep in mind, you won't be doing 4K gaming. So when it comes to battery life, of course, the 4K panel does take a pretty big hit compared to the full HD version. So instead of six or seven hours, you're probably going to get four or a five. And that's not terrible for something that has a 1060 graphics card and 4K display. But obviously, if you're looking for something with all day battery life, this is probably not your device. Now, when it comes to pricing, you're talking $23.99 for 500 gigabytes or $27.99 for one terabyte. You don't need me to tell you that is super expensive. Razer's always been about premium pricing. However, I happen to like their devices a lot. I kind of think they're justified a little bit in terms of build quality. 
Now you can find cheaper gaming laptops out there that give better performance and more specifications at a lower price point. And hey, if that fits you, that is awesome. Options are good. I really like these laptops though as I can carry them around and I don't feel nerdy doing so. But overall, it is gonna be an expensive proposition. I do like the 4K display though on this laptop a lot. Okay, so should you buy this laptop? Well, there are two things that bother me. One are those display bezels, and the other are the lack of precision touchpad drivers. Now, Razer is making progress here with both, right? The Razer Blade Stealth has thinner display bezels and also precision touchpad drivers. I'd like to see that come over to the Razer Blade line. I think it would really benefit from it. Those two things give me pause here in recommending this device, at least for everybody. Now, a lot of people don't get bothered by that, in which case the user experience here has been excellent. I really enjoy the components that Razer is using in its devices, they're very high quality, and I can give it a recommendation for professionals or gamers who are happy with those exceptions. So that was a quick look at the Razer Blade with 4K display. Now, if you want benchmarks and more information about this device, make sure you head to Windows Central, where I go into more detail in my review. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Take care, everybody.